Well, good morning, everyone, and good morning to you that are watching online. Are you all ready and comfy to listen to the message this morning? How about you here at church? Are you all ready? No sleeping. Remember, no sleeping. We're excited to be here today and worship our Lord, and the same with you that are watching online. I can't see you, but God can see you, those that are watching online. Okay, again, welcome, everyone. We're glad you're uh, participating this morning. Good to see you here this morning to worship our Lord, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We're going to get inspired this morning. Amen. Now we got announcements this morning, and I think we've got, we've got someone coming to, I'm sorry, someone's coming this morning. Lynn is going to come this morning and make the announcements. Well, good morning, everyone. I have two announcements this morning. Diane Edwards emailed me and asked me to announce that October the 15th, we're going to have a game night here. And she'll be happy to get some Subway sandwiches us for us to eat, plus chips. So if you want, please contact me. If you want to come, contact me, and I'm going to make a list to give her. So let me know what kind of sandwich you'd like, what kind of bread, what kind of meat, or cheese, or whatever you want in your sandwich. I'll make a list, collect that list, and give it to Diana Edwards, okay? And then you can pay her when she brings them and when you arrive here for the game night. That's my first announcement. My second announcement is that next week, October, I can't believe it, next week is October. It's just hard to believe. Wow. Anyway, we we'll just want to let you know that October, during the month of October, it's Pastor Appreciation Month. So it's up to you how you want to show uh, your appreciation to Jeff. There are six different ways you can pray for Jeff. Pray that God gives him wisdom and strength. You can pray by maybe writing or give him a note of encouragement. You can give him that. Just write a letter of encouragement or a card. Something that would inspire Jeff to keep him going and encourage him in his, in his work. Or else you can help serve. That would be another option. Look, way, look for ways to serve here at church. Or else you can give whatever money support you'd like to give. And five, maybe encourage families, like their, their families, that would be like me, encourage me as well. And then s Jeff says we have boys. Well, it's a cat, actually, a, ca a boy. We have a son, <laughs> a cat son. <laughs> and six, you can go out and spread the word about PDC, Peace Step Church. Tell people to come and to learn about who we are and our pastor, and they can listen to the word of God through our pastor, Jeff. Also, um, we're saying quotas can come, hearing people come, not just deaf people. That's right. That's correct. Invite anyone to come. We're open to everyone. So thank you so much. That's all my announcements. Thank you. Anyone else have any announcements they want to make this morning? Like maybe different, event, uh, different events that are coming up? <laughs> David is saying there's a birthday next week, October the 2nd. And so we'll s we won't say who. They might be watching. So who's... Someone's got a birthday next week. Anything else? Okay, next. Are you ready to worship our Lord in praising him this morning in song? Here we go.
Amen. Amen. Remember, he is always with you, always, and he's always loving you. Maybe you don't feel it, but he's there and he's with you and loving you. Okay, now we can turn the lights up a bit so I can see everyone at church here this morning and that you can write your prayer requests and put them in our box this morning. So I'm going to give you some time, and those of you online as well, get ready. You can email your prayer requests, and we'll put them in our box here. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. heart I'm asking you to give to God so this is the offering time so we've got the prayer requests we'll pray for those and over the offering and someone is just trying to get my attention here okay yeah I see it now online so whatever you can see online how different ways you can give We need to pray that all the deaf community will come here. That's one of the prayers we need to do. We need to pay, make a public announcement <coughs> about PDC and the prayer, and that we pray for people. Diane wants is, good, is praying for safe travels home. Um, also pray for Bill. He fell yesterday on his back. So we, that's what Ed was saying about Bill. So we need to pray for Bill. So let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, wow, you are so precious. You love those that are watching and those that are here. These are your people. They're hungry for your word this morning, and that's why they're watching, and that's why they're here. We are here to seek you. 
and to build up our faith and trust in you. Though we've never seen you with our eyes, we know by faith, we walk by faith and trust that you're with us. And we thank you for that, Lord. You're so merciful. No matter what we've done, you always are there to forgive us. And Lord, we know that even though we are not perfect, you still love us. You love everyone in the world, and we're all, in this, and you all your children have the same goals, to reach out to everyone, every people's group in the world, that they would know you. You love everyone because you made us, and you saved us because you loved us. You made us because you loved us. So Heavenly Father, you know what's in this prayer request box, and we offer up these prayers before you. You know your, the needs of your people, your children all over. Some need healing, some need wisdom, some need strength. And we need to, to be about our business, t business and telling others about you. And we don't want to be rebellious. We want to be obedient children. So help us to be obedient. We want to show what you are like through us. May we have the same character, the same beam as you do, Lord, that we would reach out to others through our lives, through our behaviors, through our attitude. Bless those that have given this offering, Lord. This is for your church, your work, your mission work. And you know everybody's individual needs and what they can give. And we thank you, Lord. We feel like this is we're family, we're brothers and sisters here. And we're ex so excited to, s to be a part of your family. And one day, we'll be with you. And we want to please you, Lord. We want to make you happy. So we ask that you send your Holy Spirit right now as I share part three of Psalms 23. May this build up their faith and trust in you. May this be something they'd never forget, but they understand who you are and who they are. May they never forget this message. Holy Spirit, Go out to your people. Open their hearts and minds that so they'd understand the word this morning. We thank you for this. We're ready to worship you here this morning, Lord, and to give you honor and praise. And we say this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Here's another song of worship.
I like that. Even though we heard it again, I really think we needed to hear that. That's a song that we'll never forget. So are you ready for the word of God this morning? Now this is going to be part three, the 23rd Psalm. What do you think it's going to be about? Yeah, the, yeah, it's the 23rd Psalm. And first, do you remember the, the key words? There were eight key words that we've been studying. The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean? Can someone tell me? A relationship, right? Relationship. The second word, he supplies all my needs. The answer is supply. He provides everything I need. How about the third word? You just woke up this morning from what? Uh, for a fresh new day? From rest. He gives us rest. Some of you sleep, did you sleep good? Or some, maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't have a good rest last night. <laughs> some would say, no, he wasn't sleeping very well. So that was our third one. How about the fourth one? Some of you have brought water this morning. That is for what? Refreshment. If you're thirsty, you've got water to drink. And now our fifth one? Healing. Is that correct? Yeah, he heals us. And six, he guides. He has a purpose and guides us. He guides us on the right path. How about number seven? Through the valley of the shadow of death. That's testing. Testing, protection, and faithfulness. That's where he guides us through the valley of the shadow. And number eight, can God discipline you? Yes, he does. And that's for an encouragement. With his rod and his staff, he disciplines us. He guides us. So these are eight main words that apply to this psalm. And there's a few more I'm going to give you today, too. <laughs> Let's do the Psalm 23 again. There are three different slides to this, so let's look at this. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me back up. We got to do my pictures. I'm jumping ahead of the game here. Sorry. So hold on that thought. <laughs> I'm getting disciplined. <laughs> okay, let's look at my first picture. Someone's saying this is gambling, something that's negative, but it's on the ball, is on the number, the red number 23. 23. Of course, that's because we're learning about the 23rd Psalm. Now, here's my second picture. Highway 23. She says that's County Road. She grew up and lived on Highway 23 when she was growing up. This is Diane Edwards saying that. I myself have no idea where it is, but she told me where it is. She knew exactly where it was. And someone else was saying he was trying to show where it was. Okay, what was last Thursday? Fill in the blank. It was Thursday, Thursday the 23rd, right? Yep, it was Thursday the 23rd. Of course, all my pictures are easy here, but it's making you think about the 23rd Psalm. I don't know how old these are teenagers here. Is anybody 23 years old? <laughs> Looking out. I've got some young people sitting here. Nah, maybe not 23. <laughs> okay, here's my third part to Psalms 23. 
Now are you really ready to sign 23rd Psalm? Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd. I will always have everything I need. He gives me green pastures to lie in. He leads me by calm pools of water. He restores my strength. He leads me on the right paths to show me that he is good. Next slide. Even though I walk through the valley as dark as the grave, I will not be afraid of any danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. You welcome me as an honored guest. My cup is full, full and spilling over. Your goodness, your mercy will be with me all my life. And I will live in the Lord's house a long, long time. That's the whole Psalm 23. Now you can see the different verses and different parts of it. And this is the easy to read version. The NIV has some different uh, word choices, but it all means pretty much the same. First, I want to talk about number or verse number five the, that I have highlighted in yellow. See the part I have highlighted in yellow? That's verse number five. It says, you prepare a meal for me in front of my enemies. So I'm going to ask you, what does that mean to you? I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that, your perspectives. Someone is saying, my sin. I eat with sinners. Anybody else have a thought on that verse? Which, that's fine. Maybe you've seen a different version of this. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And again, it means the same. It's me prepares a meal. A table could mean a meal the same thing. God provides it. Even though we have people all around us, God provides whatever we need. And we have to remember everything is from God. He is the provider. He provides whatever we need. Your hunger, he even provides that. He'll provide a way to satisfy your hunger in probably ways you would never expect. Like through plants, through our trees, through animals, he provides everything. Even animals, he provides for the animals, he provides for the trees, the plants, all living things he provides for. Like uh, we use an animals to eat for our meat source. And then again, that's from God. In plants, we even use that for healing and for um, different 
diseases perhaps that we have and trees too are provided for us we make paper with trees our homes are made out of wood so god provides everything and also trees breathe they provide oxygen they give us bre our breath that's a good one and we are his sheep we have to remember that and he's our shepherd our shepherd's job is to provide and protect the sheep and look for there's plenty of grass to eat. And then he'll lead the sheep to the green pastures to feed. And that's God's way of providing as a shepherd. He's the shepherd. You are the sheep. He's protecting you from wolves or other predators. That would be your enemy. David said, Keep me protected from my enemies. Watch over me. And God provides a meal before us, uh, for us before our enemies. Even the shepherd knows the medicinal, medicinal plants. So when you're hurt, there are certain plants you can use to apply. We as people who are the sheep, we know which way he should, he leads us in the direction of which way we should go out of danger and provides medicinal plants for us. And again, as predators too, that would be people that are looking to destroy you, attack you, especially if you're weak. God is your protector. He knows you belong to him, and he makes sure that he watches over you and protects you. And the words, the key words are here. In this verse, it means hope. We as his sheep are clueless about anything. And God is our shepherd who takes care of us always. And that means we have hope because we'll have eternal life with him someday. And we be can be confident and trust that God will take care of us always. He's going to meet our needs. Even when we're in danger, he'll take care of us. I have a story. It's from another book. And it kind of matches this verse. It was a book of John. It's from a book of John, chapter 10, verse 9, or chat 9 through 15. And Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters into that gate enters through me and will be safe. They can enter the gate and out of the gate in and out and they will find everything that they need the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but uh, Jesus says I came to give you life and life abundantly abundant and good that's the gate we are the sheep that come in and out through the gate. And the next part says, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. The worker who is paid to keep the sheep is different from the shepherd. The paid worker does not own the sheep. So when he sees like a wolf, when he sees a wolf coming, he runs away and leaves the sheep alone. And the wolf attacks the sheep and scatters them. The man himself runs away because he's only the paid worker. He doesn't really care for the sheep. He just cares for the money.
But Jesus is different. He gave up his life for the sheep. And Jesus said, I am the shepherd who cares for the sheep, which is you and me. I know my sheep just as the Father knows me. And my sheep know me just as I know the Father. And I give up my life for them, the sheep. And that's exactly what that verse means. He provides what you need in the presence of your enemies. And your enemies will try to trick you, but Jesus, the good shepherd, he loves you just like him and the Father love each other. And that's powerful. That gives us hope. And the next verse next few verses and it says even though I walk through the valley the shadow of death oh wait a minute hold on just a moment somebody back here is, is a question or something Hold on. Okay, I guess it's taken care of. Okay, and it says here, in another version, it says that you and me are anointed with oil. He anoints my head with oil. And that's like being, uh, like, we s like we're inviting visitors to come into our house, our home. We welcome them with open arms to come into our home. We honor them. Like the oil, it means we're honoring our guests, our visitors. And Jesus is welcoming you and I. And it's important that we feel welcomed and wanted. He's not like a demanding shepherd. He is your good shepherd who cares for you and loves you. It means that God will meet all your bodily needs, your physical needs. Like when you go camping, how many of you experienced going camping? Hands are raised here. How many have done some hiking? Hands are raised. How about fishing? Hands are raised. Some of you have done all three. But my point is that when you get attacked by mosquitoes, when you're doing these, what do you do? Well, yeah, you swat at them <laughs> all day, right? What's another option? Yes, we spray ourselves with s a repellent. And you know that there's oil in that repellent? Did you know that? A long time ago, when they didn't have the stuff we have today, like perfume, they would make perfume. They didn't want to smell. So they had oils that they would use. So when it says, he anoints my head with oil, it's anointing my head with oil so I'm not bothered by those that would try to attack me. The bug repellent, and it has oil. And also, oil is a way of healing your skin. That's why we rub oil on our skins. It, it helps our skin to heal. I remember one time, I was traveling to North Carolina it was with my roommate at college. We were going there. We were driving. It was during the summertime. We stopped by at my uncle's house who lives off of a lake, near a lake. And he had a boat shed. He kept his boat in. So my roommate and I, he asked if we wanted to go fishing. So we said, sure, why not? So my uncle said, um, 
got fishing boat out there. So we went out there and we were looking for the fishing pole and stuff. So I had no idea at that time there was a box in the back of the boat. And it was closed. And I accidentally hit the box. And you know what happened? I don't know. I didn't fall down. There were a whole bunch of bees in that box. So when I hit that box, a whole bunch of bees were flying all around me. And my roommate just stood there. <laughs> and he said, jump in the water, jump in the water. And I'm trying to swat these bees, and he's trying to motion me to run into the water. So that's what I did. I ran into the lake, and I, with all my clothes on, I ran in, dived into the water, and then I didn't feel the bees anymore. But yeah, I had some pretty swollen arms because of the bites. Anyway, my point of this, they would use oil for different reasons a long time ago. My roommate, he was from Texas, and his family were farmers, a generation of farmers. And he told me, something that would help get away, make those warps go away from the bee bites. It's the same as oil. So I asked my aunt if she had pancake oil. You know where you fry pancakes in? And she did. So she gave me that oil and then some butter as well. And I'm there, butter and oil? So, okay, so we had butter and oil. We had a bowl and he poured everything in the bowl And the butter, of course, melted. We melted the butter and mixed it in. Oh, I guess it was pancake batter. And so we put that on the wound. He dab been dabbed like a paper towel or something in the batter of oil and butter, or butter and pancake mix, put it on the bites, and then ice on top of that. And guess what happened? It went away. I was just shocked. All the bites. That's an old-fashioned remedy, but it worked. I was shocked. I was amazed that people a long time ago could figure out how to take care of wounds like that. Amazing. Today, what do we have? All this fancy stuff, right? When you anoint someone's head with oil, and that's uh, an action of hospitality. That shows hospitality. Does anybody know what that means? It means you're welcome into my home. I'm not going to shun you away. I welcome you as an honored guest. So you can clean up. You can, I provide you a place of rest and a place to eat. This is our way in Psalms of thanking, thanking God for his hospitality to us. He provides and honors, provides our needs and honors us as an honored guest. So that's our God. He's very hospitable. We can trust him to provide whatever we need for our body, like just like that, my friend showed me that oil that took care of that problem with the bee bites. God knows your needs, your individual needs, and he will provide. You know that roommate? He's an evangelist now. And he's serving God. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Wow. Now the next slide it says, my cup is full and spilling over.
In the yellow part, it says, my cup is full and spilling over. Do you know what that means? God's, that's God's love. Someone saying it's God's love is spilling over. Good one. Anyone else? It means he provides the provision. Our provision is from God. He provides abundantly. So that spilling over means abundantly. Right? It never stops. His grace, his mercy, his love is abundant. It means it never stops. His love, his mercy, his grace never stops. It continues forever. He provides always. The good shepherd provides more than just your bare necessity. He'll always love you. And he took all of your sins. We need to remember that. He took all of your sins on him as punishment. And he gathers whatever. He gathers his people together, his sheep together, and provides their food and whatever they need, even if it's something that costs him or even if there's danger to himself. He'll take care of his sheep and provide their need. He was willing to die for his sheep. He was willing to die for you. Now that is abundant love. He's willing to give you whatever you need. In your mind, your soul, your body, your w we need wisdom, you need strength, whatever you need, decisions you need to make. He helps you to make the right decisions. Also with this verse, there's another book in the Bible. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. And it says, I, So I tell you, don't worry about the things that you need to live, what you will eat, drink, or wear. Life is more important than food, and the body is more important than what you put on it. Look at the birds. They don't plant, they don't harvest. They don't save food in barns. But your heavenly Father feeds the birds. Don't you know that you are worth much more than they are? Wow. You can't add. You can't add any time to your life by worrying about it. So stop worrying. So why do you worry about your clothes? Look at the f wild flowers. Then the field. See how they grow? They don't work to make clothes for themselves. But Jesus says, I tell you that Solomon, the great and rich king, was not dressed as beautifully as one of these flowers. So if God makes what grows there in the field so beautiful, what do you think that he'll do for you? 
Look at those beautiful flowers. You're more beautiful than them. It's just grass. One day it's alive, and the next day someone throws it into a, f into a fire. But God cares enough to make it beautiful. Wow, surely he will do much more for you. Your faith is so small. Yeah. And then he goes on to say, don't worry. Don't worry what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink or what you're going to wear. That's what people who don't know God, that's what they're always thinking about, about what they're going to wear, what they're going to eat. They don't know God. So don't worry. Your heavenly Father knows what you need. So whatever you should want most, God's kingdom. So what you should want most is God's kingdom and doing what he wants you to do. Then he will give you all the things that you need. So don't worry about tomorrow. Each day has its own trouble. Tomorrow will have its own worries. God will take care of it. He will make sure that you are taken care of and provide whatever you need. Remember, he's the uh, God, of, God of abundance. My cup is full and spilling over. His mercy, his love, his grace. Wow. Next slide. His goodness, his mercy will be with me all of my life. Do you believe that? People are nodding, yes. And a different verse that means the same, it says, surely, surely, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And it means the same. It's another translation. Surely, the word surely, or goodness, surely goodness. God is always good, always. How many of you feel that God is bad? I see no hands going up. You're right. He's always good. He's amazing. He's so awesome. No matter the weather, no matter what you see outside, God is still good. He does, even when I travel with my wife and I look at the sunset, I look at everything that God has done. It, it's, every, it's just the beautiful mountains, the sunset. Recently, we traveled out west. And boy, was that ever beautiful. And we saw God's creation out there with the mountains and the hills. It was beautiful. And it was very clear for us, especially those that know God, that he is definitely good. And one guy said he's amazing. He's, there's no more li limit to his grace, his love, and mercy. Amen. When it means that God is good, it means that his grace is always on you. He's always there to forgive you. When you ask forgiveness, he's ready to forgive you. His grace, his mercy... Because you have accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior. 
means that you are part of his flock. He, we can come in and out of the gate. The gate is Jesus, our shepherd. Because of him, we have fellowship with God. And this word means blessing. Blessing. This first means blessing. We are blessed of God. And we can be sure of that God is always with us and always blessing us. And one person said, forever. And whatever you need for the day, God will provide. So don't worry about your clothing or what you're going to eat. Just be yourself and praise God and thank him for what he's given you. Now the next slide. It actually matches with this verse here. from John chapter 14 verse 18 it says I will never not leave you alone like orphans you know what that means orphans it means a person who doesn't have parents they're alone he says I will come back to you wow I won't leave you or forsake you I'm always with you all the time. That verse says that God is always good. He never leaves us or forsakes us or says, too bad, it's your problem. Not God. He doesn't do that. And that's why David said, wow, he's with me. Even when David, he sinned, but his heart was right with God. He loved God and thanked God for what he did for him. Do you agree with this? And people are nodding. Now the last verse of the psalm. And it says, And I will live in the Lord's house a long, long time. That's our shepherd. We are his sheep. So when we die, where are we going to go? We're going to go to heaven. That's right. Your name is in the book of life written there in heaven. Once you've accepted Christ, wow, that's it. Jesus said, I'm the gate. That's your way into heaven. Only through Christ. And there are different versions of this as well that say, and I will dwell, which means live, in the house of the Lord forever. It means the same, just a different translation. And the word dwell, that means to live. Our life, We are assured, it's like an assurance that we are or we have eternal life. So Psalms 23 gives us a hope. And they usually say this psalm at funerals because it provides those that are, have seen their loved one die. It gives them hope that they'll see them later. That's a very powerful psalm. You know, when you say, I'll see you later, some people think, well, he's dead. Some people that don't have any faith, they think, well, he's dead. Well, but you know in your heart, just like we're our, we all know that our life here is temporary. This is just a journey, and here we are tested and tried. But life is temporary. So 50 years, that's a long time, but people live longer than 50 years. But I look back on my life, and I think, wow, time has gone forever, or has gone quickly but I'm going to live eternally forever that's a long time that never stops wow and we'll have peace 
We won't have any enemies there, any transgression there, no sin. So we can be sure of his love for his people, you, his flock. His love is eternal and abundant. And many of you know the very famous verse, John 3.16. We're all familiar with that verse. God so loved the world that he gave his only son to die so those that believe in him will have eternal life. Again, that's a powerful promise, a powerful verse that God gave us. John chapter 3, 16 makes you feel pretty good about your eternal security, right? We as humans need acceptance, protection, provision, love, and salvation. That's what we need, really, our basic, most eternal need. And of course, it's all met in Christ. In the Bible, says that Jesus is the word, the word of God. And he paid the price. And what was that price? The death on the cross. And that was for forgiveness of our sins. We are not punished or destroyed because Jesus was punished. So that means that God has taken all of our sins, your sins and mine, and put them on Jesus. So he's our creator because he made you. And he's also your savior. He saved you from an eternal damnation, from evil, eternal fire, someone's adding. You're saved because he's claimed you as his own and he's telling all the evil around you to leave you alone because you are his. Wow. And someone from the audience is saying, I believe that with all my heart. So we as humans... We are made from dust, but now we become eternal, eternal children of God. We are eternal children of a living God. He's our good shepherd, and we are as his sheep. So before we finish with this Psalm 23, Lynn and I have something for you all. And this is a surprise. And here's a picture, or here's, here's a sample of it. It's a keychain. And each bead represents part of the 23rd Psalm. There's a reason behind each colored and each bead. And again, we'll hand that out to you that are here at the, con at the church this morning. And this sheet explains what it means. The white bead is for the verse that says, it's for, it represents purity. And it says, the Lord is my shepherd, and I will not want. The white means purity for Jesus. Then the next bead is the color green. He makes me to lie down in green pastures and to rest. The next bead is blue, and that represents that he leads me by still waters. No water, blue water. And when we're thirsty, we drink clean, clear blue water. And then there's a clear bead, 
And that means he restores our soul. A clear, my soul is clear and clean. And then there's a tan bead. He leads me in right paths. Just like when you're going hiking, he leads me in clear paths. The black bean bead means I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Even when we're dying, even when we have struggles in life, we call those dark times of our life, he's with us. And it says in the next bead, which is a heart, it says, I will never fear evil. I will trust in him. That's the red heart bead. The next bead is white. With that verse, it says, for you are with me. Jesus is always with me. Love that verse. Then the brown bead. That represents the rod and staff. That's my comfort, discipline, but comfort. Then there's a bead with the X on it. That one there. And that means he prepares a table or a meal before me before me with my before me with my enemies. And then the gray he prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. So the gray represents the enemies. Then there's a yellow bead. He anoints my head with oil. And that's like a honored guest. Then the purple bead, my cup runneth over. That's an abundance of his love, mercy, and grace. Then there's a pearl bead, white pearl. That means surely goodness and mercies shall follow me. A shiny white pearl. Then the next one, yeah, is a, a happy face. It's like an emoji, a happy face. And that represents all the days of my life, every day of my life. And the last one is gold. And there's a cross attached at the end. And it represents the verse, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever, forever. And we'll give one to each of you to remember Psalms 23 and how we elaborated on the different verses. So I'll give them to you um, after service here. We'll pass them out. I believe we have enough for everyone here today. So I hope you all understand now better the book of Psalms and why it's said at funerals. Hope it's built some knowledge into you and hope as well that God loves you. He's your protector. He's your provider. And we will live with him forever someday in heaven. So are you ready for your favorite part? The pop quiz? And here you go. Okay. This is our first question. Is it true or false? There were two different women that anointed Jesus while he sat at a meal. When he sat and eat, that means at a meal. It means he was eating. Sometimes meat or whatever they had. Vegetables, potatoes, salad. 
but that's what that means, meat. It could not just meat, meat. It could be any kind of a meal. So how many say it's true? One hand raised. How many say this is false? One hand raised. Okay, remember the question? Two women. There were two different women that anointed Jesus. And yes, this is true. This is in Luke chapter 7, verse 36 to 38. It says, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to eat with him. Jesus went into the Pharisee's house and took a seat at the table. And there was a sinful woman in that town. She knew that Jesus was eating at that Pharisee's house. So the woman brought some expensive perfume in an alabaster jar. She stood at Jesus' feet, weeping, crying. Then she began to wash his feet with her tears. And then she dried his feet with her hair. She kissed his feet many times and rubbed them with the perfume. And then there's another verse. This is the second woman. Again, this is a different book of the Bible. It's from John chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Again, this is true. So six days before the Passover festival, Jesus went to the city called Bethany. And that's where Lazarus lived. That was the man that Jesus raised from the dead. There they had a dinner for Jesus. And Martha was serving the food. Lazarus was one of the people eating with Jesus. Mary brought a pint of expensive perfume, and it was made from pure nard. She poured the perfume on Jesus' feet. Then she wiped his feet with her hair, and the sweet smell from the perfume filled the whole house. So yes, the answer is true. They were two different women that anointed Jesus' feet. Remember a long time ago when people would walk? Some people didn't have shoes during the time of Jesus, and of course their feet became dirty, very dirty, and calloused. So this is what she was doing. She was cleaning his feet. I'm not sure what kind of perfume she used, but I'm assuming it was some kind of expensive stuff at that time. Someone saying B-F-R-A, Frankenstein? Or maybe frankincense. I think Macy's, we go Macy's store now and get some real fancy, like Victoria's Secret or something, but at that time they didn't have that, so maybe it was a frankincense or something. You know, women would always have to use perfume. I like that. Oh, someone is saying, uh, Elmetha thing? I don't know. Elizabeth. Oh, Elizabeth Arden. Elizabeth Arden is another popular one. 
So I'm sure whatever expensive uh, perfume it was at that time, I'm sure it was a very good quality. Now here's the second slide or question. How many say this is true, or is it true or false? Did the Pharisees that were baptized of John the Baptist, true or false? How many say true? Mm, one hand raised. How many say false? One, two, three hands raised. It's false. Yes, it's false. In Luke chapter 7, verse 29 to 30, it says that when the people heard this, they all agreed that God's teaching was good. Even the tax collectors, collectors agreed. These were the people who were baptized by John. But the Pharisees and the experts in the law they refused to accept God's plan for themselves. They did not let John baptize them. Maybe eventually some of the Pharisees did, but but that would have been quite a shock. <laughs> yeah, a shock. Do you know what that means when you do that? It's like when on the last day when they're going to have to face God, it's going to be a total shock. And that's like a big lump in the throat type of thing. Gulp. So this is why the Pharisees probably were going to be shocked. Next question. Now, is this true or false, that a woman was the first Christian convert in Europe? I know it might be a little complicated here, but uh, how many think this is true? How many false? No hands are raised at all. Here's the answer. It's true. And the answer is true. And this is from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 14 through 15. It says there was a woman there named Lydia, and she was from the city of Thy Thyatira. Thyatira, I did some research on that and found out that's a city in Egypt, in Turkey. And so that was part of Europe. And her job was to sell purple cloth. She was a worshiper of the true God. And Lydia was listening to Paul. And the Lord opened her heart to accept what Paul was saying. She and all the people living in her house were baptized. And then she invited us into her home and she said if you think I am a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ come and stay in my house and she persuaded us to stay with her so she was the first woman in Europe to become a Christian and that's part of Bible history so you learned something different today something new
And that was very popular, the clothes that she was selling at that time. Now you ready for my cute pictures? Oh, or someone saying in the audience, they love my cute pictures. I do try my best to get some humor in this. Who loves to camp? Hands are going up here all over. And uh, you love my Psalms 23. Well, this is kind of a joke, a uh, takeoff of Psalm 23 relating to camping. It says, the Lord is my camp guide. I have everything that I need. He lets me rest in clean campsites with running water and electricity. He gives me good rest and leads me on paths marked clearly to the restrooms and hot showers because he is good. Even though I walk through the valley of mosquitoes, I will not be afraid because you give me deet. Your campfire and picnic pavilion comfort me. You prepare s'mores and hot dogs in the presence of raccoons. You fill my Coleman lantern with oil and my coffee mug overflows. Surely good weather and fun will be with me and I will stay in the Lord's campground forever. <laughs> That's kind of a little sarcasm on the Psalms, the Psalms 23. And they're calling this a campground. And this is Campers International Version. C I V. So, something for you to think about when you're camping. I do think this is a little odd, but anyway. Here's my next picture. <laughs> this girl is praying, the little girl is praying in bed here. And she couldn't think of what to pray, so she just says, I'll play the pre Pledge of Allegiance instead. People in the audience are laughing. <laughs> we never run out of fun, especially this family circus. Everybody loves family circus. The next picture. So this is a church sign at Star Trek, I guess that's their sign, Trek. And they have that, you know, beam me up, Scotty, that kind of thing. So the needs of many outweigh the needs of the few or the one. That's what the sign states. The one is Jesus. So we need many things, but he always meets our need. And again, this is from Star Trek, that special sign they do with their hand like that. The weight of one outweigh, the needs of many outweigh the needs of a few. So I tr they're trying to match that Jesus is the one. How many of you like Star Trek? Hands are being raised, a few. That's something far in the future. I don't think it's going to ever see, I don't think in my day and age I'll ever see anything like that happen. That's far out into the future. S 
Next picture. It's time. Anyone want to volunteer and say the Lord's Prayer up front here this morning? We have one woman willing to come front. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What a beautiful, that was beautiful. Now for the blessing. May God go before you to guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you. May he be with you to be a friend and above you to watch over you and within you to give you peace. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you the way David expressed his heart in Psalms 23. And that psalm has been a favorite for years and for generations. Now as we researched and studied the meaning of this psalm, wow. You are our shepherd. We are your sheep. You provide whatever we need, both physically, spiritually. You give us hope, and our thirst for you, our desire for you will never stop. Your mercy, your love endures forever, and cu our cup runneth over. This Psalms 23 isn't only applied to funerals. This is something that we can apply to our hearts even now while we're alive. It shows your love for us, and that someday we'll be with you forever in heaven. Wow, God. That's your promise, and that we can trust, because you've never broken your promises. Now, so Heavenly Father, we ask that you bless your people, those that are watching online, those that are here at church. Be with them as you promised. Protect them as you promised. You know their needs, and you will take care of their needs. Cause them to feel your presence there, that they know for sure without a doubt that you're, will, you're with them and that they would continue to trust you even more and more as the days go on. And Lord, we don't know what next week is going to look like. But we ask, Lord, that as we think about the 23rd Psalm, that they would look at this keychain in remembrance of the 23rd Psalm, something they can carry with them always to remember. And we want to thank you. Thank you for that, Lord. Now, as we're ready to leave and go home, we ask for your protection. Be with everyone here today, God, and those that are watching online. Comfort them, those that need comfort. We all thank you. We thank you from the depths of our heart. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you all, always.